Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Sherry. I'm glad you called. Oh, you'll have to cancel me out tonight, Angel. I'm all jammed up. Mm-hmm. Some client of mine wants me to locate a missing girl. He doesn't care what it costs, so naturally I'm going to shoot the works. Once again, The Adventures of the Falcon. Dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the killer's key. It is early afternoon in New York, and in a shabby rooming house in midtown Manhattan, a nervous young man named Larry Gordon gives himself a dose of artificial courage. <laughs> Then, deciding further treatment is indicated, he starts pouring again. Who is it? Me, Larry. Open up. Wait a minute, Claire. Did you get them? Everything. You, you fly to Chicago. And there I made a reservation for you on the California Limited. What name did you use? Larry Holcomb. Good. When's the plane leave? 8.25 tonight. Couldn't you get me out sooner? No. Listen, Larry, I, I still think you're making a mistake. Running away is no solution. Are you crazy? Maybe this isn't as bad as you think. It's worse. If Hunt ever lays his hands on me, that's it. I think you're wrong. Look, I worked for the man for eight years. I know how his mind operates. I never should have opened my yap to those treasury boys in the first place. You had to, darling. Why? Was someone twisting my arm? They got enough on him to send him up for ten years. But without you, they've got no case. And don't think that Mr. Hunt doesn't know it. Now, if you want to help me pack... Larry... I think you could have been followed? No. No, I, I was very careful. Who is it? Kemper. Internal Revenue. Oh, just a minute, Mr. Kemper. Look, sweetie, they'd be awful sore if they know I told you where I was. What do you want me to do? Get in the kitchen and for Pete's sake, be quiet. All right, darling. I'm coming, Mr. Kemper. Hello, Larry. Mr. Hunt. Yes. But I thought about... I hope you'll forgive the deception. I did it very well, don't you think? Kemper, Internal Revenue Department. You know, the stage may have lost a great talent. Listen, Mr. Hunt... I'm afraid I haven't time, Larry. I'm pretty busy these days combing Internal Revenue men out of my hair. I wasn't going to testify against you. You weren't? No, no, I was beating it. See, I, I, I've got the tickets right here. So you were bound for California, eh? In my humble opinion, you couldn't have chosen better. Where were you planning to stay? Why? Well, uh, someone should cancel the reservation. Since you're going elsewhere. No, no, don't. Have a pleasant journey, my boy. Yeah? I'd like to see Mr. Hunt, please. Who are you? The Sergeant Corbin. You don't look like a soldier to me. You're right. I'm with the police. Where's Hunt? Well, it's like this, Sergeant. Uh, Bruce, did you say... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were entertaining. He ain't so entertaining. You Charles Hunt? That's right. I'm Sergeant Corbin, homicide. How morbid. Well, somebody's got to do the job, you ever hear of a fellow named Larry Gordon? Yes, of course. He works for me. Or should I say, he once did. Why? Well, I'm being investigated on an income tax matter, as you may have heard. Yeah, I've heard. And since Larry's going to testify against me, naturally I don't consider him in my employ. Well, he won't need the job anyhow. Pardon? He was knocked off at three this afternoon. I can't believe it. Well, take my word for it. I saw the body. I have an idea you saw it. Even before I did. You're not serious. I certainly am. We got enough evidence. Evidence? Yes. You see, by an odd coincidence, Larry's girlfriend, Claire Marlowe, was in the kitchen when you gunned him. Is that what Miss Marlowe claims? Well... Well, what? Well, it's the way we figure it. We found her fingerprints. You're evading the question. Has Miss Marlowe accused me? Well, I... I haven't spoken to her yet. Why not? She disappeared. 
She must have been scared to death. The fact remains, until you discover Miss Marlowe, you have absolutely no case. Don't worry, we'll find her. And when we do... Uh, when you do, give me a call. Okay, hon, I'll be seeing you shortly. And then we'll see how... Uh, you're creating a draft, Sergeant. Well, Bruce? You heard. How can I help but I'm not deaf. What do you think? I think when they find Claire Marlowe, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. On the other hand, suppose I find her first. Who was that private detective Logan mentioned the other day? You mean Mike Waring? See the one they call the Falcon? Yeah. Well, uh, be a good boy and look up his address. I think I've got a case for him. the situation, Mr. Waring. So you see my problem. No, I'm afraid I don't, Mr. Hunt. Isn't it obvious? I want you to locate this Claire Marlowe. You said the police are looking for him. Unfortunately, I haven't much confidence in them. Mm -hmm. Well, the jails are loaded with people who thought that. Uh, nevertheless, I'd like to see you take the assignment. I don't like it. Why not? It smells to me of tampering with a witness. Corporate claims this Claire Marlowe can prove you're guilty of Larry Gordon's murder. But there's another side to the coin... If Miss Marlowe saw someone else, she can establish my innocence. Yeah, I suppose that's true enough. What if the police find her first? So much the better. I just want the additional insurance. In my position, I need it. All right, Hunt. I'll do what I can. That's all I ask. You do what you can. And from that point on, it's up to me. <laughs> Yeah. You the superintendent? That's right. My name is Mike Waring. I wonder if you could give me some information about one of your tenants. Who? Claire Marlowe. Hmm. You a cop? Why? So I told the other fella everything I knew. What other fella? Oh, tall, thin fella, about your size. Oh, you must mean Sergeant Corbett. Yeah, that's his name. Mm -hmm. Well, now that you've told Corbett, why not tell me? I don't know nothing. Came home yesterday like she was scared of something, went right to her room. How long did she stay? Oh, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Did she have a grip with her when she left? Nope. Just a pocketbook. And she didn't say where she was going? Nope, and I didn't ask. I believe a fellow should mind his own... If it ain't one thing, it's another. Excuse me a second. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, what do you know... Special delivery from Claire Marlowe. Yeah, let me see that. Hey, what you doing? Uh, just a minute. Dear Herman, please don't tell anyone you've heard from me, anyone at all. I wonder if you'd be good enough to do me a favor. I've made arrangements with North American Van Lines to move my stuff on Wednesday. They know where to deliver it. My bank book is in the upper right-hand drawer of my dresser. If you take it with the enclosed withdrawal slip, I'm sure you'll have no trouble getting the money. Will you please bring it over to me at... The Kenton Hotel. I'm using the name Claire O'Brien. Yeah, why does she want to use a name like that for? Kenton Hotel, then. Eh? Hey, where are you going? I have to report to my client. You've been a great help, Herman. Thanks a million. Bruce? Yeah? I believe that's the phone. I believe you're right. Don't you think you should answer? What's the point, Mr. Hunt? It's probably for you. You know something, Bruce? I'm beginning to dislike your attitude. Now answer the phone. I still say it's a waste of time. Yeah? I'd like to talk to Gerald Hunt, please. Who wants him? Mike Waring. Hold it. But I tell you, it's for you. Who is it? The Falcon. All right. Oh, uh, I don't think I'll be needing you anymore today. You mean you want me to leave? That's what I want. Well, far be it for me to hang around. I'm not one. Hello? I've got good news for you, Hunt. Really? Really. I've located Claire Marlowe. That is wonderful. She's staying at the Kenton Hotel. She's registered under the name of Claire O'Brien. 
I needn't tell you how happy I am with your services, Mr. Waring. Oh, I was lucky. Let's say we both were. You may have been fortunate to find Claire, but I was lucky to find you. I would have had a difficult time of it without you. I'll think nothing of it. When are you planning to see Claire? Immediately. You're familiar with the old proverb, he who hesitates is lost. Well, in my position, I can't afford to waste a second. Goodbye, Mr. Waring. Thanks ever so much. An hour has passed since Mike Waring reported to his client, Gerald Hunt, where Claire Marlowe could be found. And now in that young lady's hotel room... All right, all right, you guys. Come on, let's hurry it up. Get out of all here. Right, Sergeant. Oh, Davis, see if you can find any prints around. Oh, I doubt it. Can I move the body now, Sarge? Now you better wait for Lewis. He may want some more pictures. Right. Hey, Levy, how you doing on that? Okay, okay. Oh, you boys carry on. I'll get it. I'd like to... Uh, uh, Sergeant Corbett. Hey, what are you doing here? Well, I came to see Claire Marlowe. Okay, Look. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Well, is this close enough, or would you like to hold her hand? Oh, I don't think she'd get a kick out of it. Neither do I. What'd you want with her? That's a long story. Well, I never knew you to tell any other kind, so let's get started. Well, a client of mine wanted me to find her. And you did. I was lucky. I wonder. Who's your client? Well, I'd rather not say. So you'd rather not say, huh? Look, Lunkhead, an innocent girl's been murdered. Nobody knew where she was hiding out. And if you found her... All right, her... all right, you don't have to draw me a diagram. I was responsible. Yes, indeed. You set her up for a clay pigeon. I've known stupid jerks in my time, but of all... Look, that's... never mind a name, Sergeant. I can think of a million to call myself. Well, who's your client? Or maybe I can guess. Well, don't bother. Look, Mike, don't try to hold out on me. I'm not going to. I admit I was the patsy in this case. You were the patsy? What about her? Well, I know, I know. Well, someone's going to pay for it. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm going to have a word with my client. After that, you can have him. Well, frankly, I doubt it will be much left. I'll be seeing you, Sergeant. Yeah, he's hunting. Who are you? Never mind. I'll announce myself. Now, wait a sec. All right, Bruce. Come on in, Mr. Waring. Uh, try and keep me out. Bruce, get the gentleman a drink. Sure. What do you have, Buster? A little privacy. Suppose you leave me alone with your boss. What orders I take, I take from him. You better give him his walking papers, Hunt. Really, Mr. Waring? Aren't you being a bit high-handed? Tell him to blow! All right, Bruce. You may go. Well, as long as you put it that way. All right, now, what was the idea, Hunt? What was what idea? Don't give me any double talk. I'm in no mood for it. How dare you? It's easy. I'll show you. No. Look, you made a sucker out of me. You got me to find Claire Marlowe so you could kill her. You mean Claire's dead? As if you didn't know. But I didn't. I suppose you don't remember me phoning you at 1.30 this afternoon. I told you where you could find her. I could blow my brains out for not calling on her first. But you didn't make that mistake, did you? Let me go. I'm sure, I'll let you go. Our confessions are in order. You killed her, didn't you? No. Come on, Hunt. I'm going to get the truth if I have to break every bone in your body. You murdered her just as you murdered Larry Gordon. I swear I didn't. Where's your coat? I'm not going with you. Yes, you are. I promised to deliver you to Sergeant Corbett down the headquarters, and that's one promise I intend to keep. Now, will you go quietly? No. Okay, suit yourself. <laughs> now, come on. Get up. You've got a long, rough trip ahead of you. Hey, Matty. Yes, Sergeant. Carlin report in yet? Just about two minutes ago. Well, where's Hunt? He couldn't find him. You mean he skipped? Yeah, Carlin said the place was a shambles. Well, get a 47 out. I want every bus and train depot watch and cover the airfields. If Hunt gets away... Don't we... worry, Sergeant, he won't. Hey, never mind, Matty. All right, you crumb inside. <laughs> no, let me go. What's the idea, Mike? What's the matter with you, Sergeant? Don't you recognize him? Well, who would? He looks... Wait a minute. It's Hunt. That's right. Well, what happened? Well, he had a little accident. Come on, Hunt. Sit down. Did you slug him? 
No, Sergeant, you know me. Well, that's why I asked. Listen, Mike. Well, look, why don't we both listen? All right, Hunt, make like a birdie. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, if I've got to bounce you around again... Hey, what's going on here? He admitted to me that he murdered Claire Marlowe. I lied. You what? I couldn't help myself, Sergeant. He would have killed me. Yes, and it's not too late now. Do you deny... I that... deny everything. I was forced to make that admission to protect myself. Under the circumstances, I felt I was justified. Look, Sergeant, could you leave us alone for a couple of minutes? Don't be a sap. Well, it's all right for you to talk, but I feel responsible for that girl's death. If I hadn't found her, she would still have been alive. I phoned him at 1.30 and I hey, told... wait a minute. When did you phone him? At 1.30. Oh, no. Why, what's the matter? But do you realize what you've done? You've just given him an alibi. Are you nuts? Claire Marlowe was killed at a quarter to one. What? 45 minutes before you called him. Well, that means... That means he couldn't have killed her. Oh. Well, look, Hunt, if I've done you an injustice... Indeed you have. Will it do any good if I said I was sorry? None at all. Good day, gentlemen. I trust I'll never see either of you again. Well, welcome home, Mr. Hunt. I see you've taken over, Bruce. I didn't think you'd mind. You like some champagne? No, thanks. You don't know what you're missing. This is the bitter end. Ah. They tell me it's the only thing when you're celebrating. Is that what you're doing? Sure. Aren't you back? I'm flattered. I didn't dream you cared. Yeah, I was real worried. I had a feeling I was never going to see you again. Hey, you ought to do something about that eye. That Mike Waring can really dish it out, can't All right, Bruce. The joke is over. What's the meaning of this? I told you I was celebrating. Surely you don't begrudge your ex-employee a bottle of champagne. My ex-employee? Well, the way I see it, I've been working for you for seven years. So? So I decided it was time I bettered myself. After all, this is the land of opportunity. And you feel opportunity is knocking at your door? Definitely. You sure you won't join me in a drink? Enough of this nonsense. Get me my robe. You don't seem to understand. I'm through taking orders. With what I got and on And what you... have you got on me? For one thing, you knocked off Larry Gordon and Claire Marlowe. This may come as a shock to you. But the police, I... are satisfied I had no hand in either. You see, I have an unimpeachable alibi. Is that a fact? Yes. It now develops that Miss Marlowe was murdered 45 minutes before Mr. Waring reported her whereabouts to me. Well, what do you know? I know you've been taking too much for granted. I don't think so. I happen to know how it was worked. You do? Yeah. I was going through your clothes. What? Well, I thought maybe you wanted me to send them out to the cleaners. Anyway, in your pocket, I found this card. Lawrence Regan, Private Investigations. So? So I wondered what you would want with two private detectives, and just like that, it came to me. You were going to use Waring as an alibi. You're mistaken. Well, there's an easy way to check. Who are you calling? The boy Sherlock, Lawrence Regan. You're being ridiculous. Am I? Hello? Let me talk to Mr. Regan, please. Speaking. This is Bruce Webster. I work for Mr. Hunt. Well? Well, the boss would like to know whether you had any luck finding Claire Marlowe. What's the matter with the guy? Has he blown a fuse? I reported back to him at 11 o'clock this morning. She's at the Kenton Hotel, registered under the name of Claire O'Brien. I guess it kind of slipped his mind. What's going on here? Nothing you should worry about. Thanks a lot, anyway. Well, you win. I always do. I'm the patient type. I learned that from you. What do you want? $25,000. That's a lot of money. Well, it ain't as though I was going to throw it away. I'm going to sock it into government bonds. That 3% they pay will come in mighty handy. You're making a mistake. I don't think so. I always say the least a fella can do is be patriotic. You better get it up fast, Mr. Hunt. We don't want to keep Uncle Sam waiting. I don't get it, Sergeant. I don't get it at all. Well, you would if I had my way. You ruined everything. Look, are you sure Claire Marlowe died at the quarter of the one? Positive. The desk clerk at the hotel heard the shots. Did she have any other enemies? No. 
This thing's tied up with the Larry Gordon killing for sure. But it doesn't make sense. Well... There was no way in the world for the... Hello. That you, Waring? Yes, who's this? Bruce Webster. Who? I work for Hunt, remember? Oh, yeah. I just thought you might be interested. I'm terminating my employment. That's supposed to mean something to me? It might mean a lot. If you could dig up some cash, I could let you in on my reason. What are you talking about? Well, wouldn't you like to know how Hunt made a chop out of you? I certainly would. How much dough can you raise? <laughs> I'm not in Hunt's class. No, but every little bit helps. Could you lay your hands on ten grand? Don't be ridiculous. Five? I've got $720 in the bank. Fine, I'll take it. Now, wait a minute. Come on, Waring, make up your mind. Where are you? I got a little place at the Fortuna Apartments on West 93rd. Drop around when you're in the neighborhood. Okay. Don't go away. I'll be in the neighborhood in 20 minutes. That you, Waring? Yeah. Just a second. Come on in. Mr. Hunt. Surprised? Yeah, I thought I saw the last of you. You thought wrong. What's the idea? It's fairly simple. I'm a man who hates loose ends. Naturally, with you dangling about. You wouldn't. Oh, you recognize the gun. Yes, it's the same one I used on Larry Gordon and Claire Marlowe. You'll never get away with it. The cops will know for sure. You're concerned for me. You needn't worry. You see, I've taken the liberty of preparing a note in which you confess to both murders. You're nuts. When the police break in, they'll find the note and the murder gun. Naturally, it'll be in the traditional position for suicide. They'll never buy it. I had no motive to knock off Larry Gordon. You have the way I've explained it in this note. Seems you were madly in love with Claire. When she spurned you for Larry, you decided to rid yourself of the competition. As for Claire, she was a witness to the act. So regretfully, you had to dispose of her, too. Isn't that poetic? Listen, Hunt. I wish I could, my boy. But time is of the essence. No, don't. Fifteen minutes have passed since Mike promised to call on Bruce Webster. Now we find Sergeant Corbett helping him keep that promise. This must be it. Yeah. Suppose he won't talk. Just leave everything to me. I left Hunt to you and what happened? Sure he said he'd meet you here? That's positive. I told him I'd be over in 20... Look, get out of the way. What are you doing? Well, what does it look like? Don't you know it isn't polite to peek through keyholes? No, but it could be awfully interesting. <clears throat> what do you see? Give me a hand at this door. Well, what was it? Come on, come on. Put your shoulder to it. One, two. <laughs> Holy smoke. Yeah. Well, what did he want to do that for? Don't ask me. I'm a stranger here myself. Here, yeah, wait a minute. What do you make of this? To whom it may concern, this was the only way. I killed Larry Gordon. It was all Claire Marlowe's fault. She led me on. I thought with Larry out of the way, we'd have a deal. But I was a chump. Don't bother looking for any relatives. I haven't... Hey, cut that out, Mike. I was only going through his pocket. Well, you know better. I just wanted to see what he had on him. Well? well someone was here before me. All he's got on him are these two keys. What do you make of it? Well, one's obviously for his grip, the other for his car. No, this doesn't add up. What do you mean? He didn't commit suicide. But look at the gun. You look at it. I tell you, this was engineered. By whom? By Hunt, of course. Yes. Can you prove that? Well, to you? Where's my percentage? Let's find someone who'll give me better odds. <laughs> When I was up at Bruce's a few hours ago... And you admit you were there. Why should I deny it? He complained of not feeling well this evening. Naturally, the least I could do was chauffeur him home. And when you left? He seemed perfectly all right. I never dreamt he contemplated suicide. I still don't understand why. Well, maybe this note will clear things up. Well, it may concern. There's only way I... Oh, so that explains it. Yes, it would seem to... I never realized he was involved with Claire. Uh, well, things are seldom what they seem. For instance, when we broke into Bruce's room, it looked as though he committed suicide. But you don't believe it? No. 
You told me you found the gun in the sand. Yes. And it was the same weapon that was used on Larry Gordon and Claire Marlowe. Mm-hmm. Well, I should imagine that would take care of everything. Oh, no, not quite. There was one thing missing. When Corbett and I got to Bruce's room, the door was locked. Well? Well, if he committed suicide, it had to be locked from the inside. Obviously. Well, then what happened to the key? That's right. It wasn't in the lock because you were able to peek through the keyhole. And it wasn't on him or in the room. That means the door must have been locked from the outside and the killer absentmindedly walked off with the key. Look, Mr. Waring. All right, Sergeant. Go through his pockets. No, you can't. Oh, can't. Well, what have we got here? It's all a mistake. Yeah, you said it, friend. And the beautiful part of it is it only takes one to land you in the chair. All right, Sergeant. He's all yours. Like my father used to say, another day, another dollar. And believe me, you didn't earn this one. I did all the work. Well, you schlump, you should talk. You gave Hunt that alibi. You're out of your mind. If it hadn't been me, it would have been some other private dick. Come again? Look, it all comes down to one thing. Hunt had two of us trying to locate Claire. He probably waited until the other boy came through for him before he even hired me. Well, what was the point? Give himself that alibi. After all, when I told you I reported to him after the girl was murdered, it didn't seem possible he could have been responsible. Well, I still say... Oh, wait, wait a minute, hold everything. Well, what's the matter? I just thought of something. I never got paid. Huh? By Hunt for finding Claire. Sue him. Sue him? He's going to the chair. So what? If I were you, kiddo, I'd really make trouble for him. <laughs> Good night, Mike. <laughs> 